is going on, everybody? I hope you're all having yourselves a fantastic Sunday night. Just got done enjoying that Sixers win. What a tip-in by Ben Simmons there at the end. I know a lot of people uh, have certain feelings about him, but a win is a win in my books, and uh, I got to enjoy that tonight. Um, what a wild weekend. What a fun draft it was. So thank you for everybody for tuning in to that coverage. But I thank you for tuning in to another edition of On the Road to Victory. If you guys have any questions, any comments about this draft or anything, please feel free to throw it my way. Thanks for tuning in tonight, guys. A little bit of a late one tonight. I was on with my guys over at 4th and John, if you were able to check that out. Um, you guys know I told you last night we'd get a little bit into these free agents uh, that we signed, uh, the undrafted free agents, that is. I liked the draft that we had last night. Uh, check out the video. Gave it a grade. I, I really like um, what we did here. Um, you know, you see that we added a lot more defense than uh, we did offense. And I think that, you know, these guys are going to be contributors for the most part for the foreseeable future. So I like this draft. Ended up going with an A minus. Um, I think what you have to look at is the fact that we acquired a first round pick next year. And we have an extra fifth round pick next year now. So Howie Roseman, not only did he draft guys that are going to help us for the future. And I know a lot of people are upset about certain people, but we went through all the players last night, broke down what they're going to mean to this team. So give it, you know, check that video out and uh, see why I gave it an A minus. But I think that this team, um, it's in a retooling period. So it's going to take a couple of years. So obviously, you know, there were some names like JOK, right? I really liked him. Unfortunately, we passed on him. Landon Dickerson, a great talent. Obviously, we want him to be healthy. You want everyone to be healthy. Any guy could be an injury away from his career being over. So that something, you know, of concern. But I, I really like what we did. We added to the trenches, which we know the Eagles always do. But uh, we really loaded up. And I, I know that we added an inside corner. So my biggest concern still is the outside corner. You guys know that I've been harping on that since last year. So, of course, I'm still pissed off there. But there's still time. Still time to make a trade. Still time to add someone in free agency. So, you know, we talk about some of the free agents. Um, I made a show not too long ago about some of those guys. You can take a look at the list I had. Um, I know Casey Hayward was just signed uh, by the Raiders. But this uh, was made a couple weeks ago. But Steven Nelson, I keep harboring on it, uh, made a video about him the day he was actually cut. I, I really can't stress enough. We'll bring this up again. Here's the stats I had from that video. I, I really liked this guy, and I think you know he would be perfect to go outside with Slay. Then you have McPherson and Maddox playing on the inside, matching up with certain people. I think that would be a pretty decent secondary. So, um, yeah, please sign Steven Nelson. Uh, that would make me a very happy, happy man. Now, um, we talk about adding so much of the defense. Uh, in the undrafted class, it seems that we're adding a lot of offense. We've only added one defensive player thus far. Uh, but as you can look, the other uh, the other graphic, they were all on the right side. Now you see that they're all on the left. Picked up a couple of receivers, a couple offensive linemen, tight end, then a quarterback. We talked about, you know, we don't really need to draft one. We could add one in, you know, the undrafted class. And I really, really like that addition. So you know, might as well, let's just jump into that edition first. Jamie Newman got ourselves a QB3. Now, this guy, uh, it's reported he's 6'4", 6'3", 6'2". I think he's more like 6'2", but I put it right in the middle there. That way we'll keep everyone happy. But this guy is fantastic. Um, they talk about his dual threat ability, but I think, you know, playing for Wake Forest, uh, then he transferred to Georgia, I, I think more because of the plays breaking down he had to run. It wasn't by design. And I think that, you know, he actually can throw the ball. So he's not just somebody that, you know, runs the ball. He throws a pretty damn ball and a uh, nice zip on it. I think he needs to work on a lot of his fundamentals. He sticks to his first read a lot. Um, he needs to work on going through his progressions. So there's a lot of work to be done, but what a perfect team to come to than a bunch of guys that have been quarterbacks, been receivers, been quarterback coaches, you know, you got Nick Sirianni as your head coach, Shane Steichen as your offensive coordinator, Brian Johnson, the quarterback coach, and then Kevin Petullo, the passing game coordinator. So a lot of guys that are going to be able to help Jamie Newman grow. I'm very excited to have him as QB3. What a perfect guy to learn under in Jalen Hurts. And then we have Joe Flacco there in the mentor role to help these young guys. And I'm very excited to have him. 
and we talked about this going to be competition. Wouldn't be surprised to see them sign somebody or add and sign another undrafted free agent here. Uh, we're going to add, I'm sure at least three or four more guys. So I will keep you posted with that, but on to the next, uh, offensive player. Uh, we'll go with Travon Grimes. Another one. I'm really excited about six, four, two eighteen. Now, obviously he's got his issues because well, that's why he's undrafted. Ladies and gentlemen, at a size like that, six, four, two eighteen, you think to yourself, Oh my. And, there are uh, some highlight tapes out there, you know, him beating Horn, him, you know, doing some damage to Patrick Sertain. I think that, you know, he's talented. He just has to work on a lot of things, you know, uh, high pointing the ball. When you're a big guy like that and he's a deep threat, you need he needs to learn how to track the ball, I think, a little bit better. Um, when he does have contested catches, when he goes up to get it, I think he definitely needs to work on that as well. So definitely some issues there, but the kid's got some speed for a six, four guy. He goes up, uh, you know, and makes plays deep plays. I, I just, he has good route running. He just needs to work on those couple things I talk about, but high hopes for that kid. He's going to put some competition there for JJ Arthega Whiteside because well, he can block too. So that's something Arthega Whiteside at least has going for him, but this kid's got that down and we'll see how it works out for him. Now we did add another offensive player in, uh, as a weapon. Now that's a, not much of a weapon. Jamon Osmond, not to talk crap on the young man, happy for him. Uh, but what they do say about him, uh, more what I think of is, you know, like a Greg Ward type player where he's a sure handed kind of guy on the, you know, shorter routes, not really a great route runner, not fast, not super strong. So, you know, he's just an average kind of player, but, uh, he makes great catches, you know, in between the hashes. And I think, you know, that, you know, add some value to yourself. So that's why he's being brought on. Maybe he can push Greg Ward. So you want to see things like that. Could see him, um, you know, trying to win that slot position. We need to upgrade there. So we'll see what we get out of him. Now, one more weapon on the offense. I'm not sure how much of a weapon you would consider him exactly, but Jack Stoll, we love the mullet. A uh, little ridiculous with that. I think it's hilarious. Um, but 6'4", 247. Um, this kid, we talked about him yesterday because of that mullet. Uh, had to bring it up. But somebody that they, uh, soft hands, you know, makes great catches, but needs a lot of work on a lot of things. That's why he's an undrafted guy. He's 6'4", 247, but he doesn't really, uh, he's not really filled out. More of a skinnier guy that needs to beef up get stronger, uh, but he's a willing blocker. Um, somebody that you could use, as we talked about, we wanted to add this type of tight end, an H back, you know, somebody that not necessarily a full back as an inline blocker, but somebody that you can line up as Trey Burton was in the Nick Sirianni, Nick Sirianni offense over in Indianapolis. So Jack Stoll, somebody that, you know, we need tight end help. We'll see what happens with Ertz if he sticks around or if we cut him June 1st or before that, uh, try to trade him. We will see, but we need some help there, and uh, yeah, why not? Uh, so that mullet, i got to show it one more time. Just just ridiculous, but best of luck to you there, Jack. Uh, then uh, sticking with the offense here, uh, we will go offensive line, Coyote Awasika. Now, this kid played tackle, um, but with his size, his arm length, uh, th they just project him more playing as a guard, which I see myself. Um, you know, this is one of those guys. And, and you have to realize these are all going to be players. They're undrafted for a reason. They've got lots of issues. You know, they say that he too upright. Uh, he struggles with his redirections and, you know, it, he stays too high with his pad level is one of the things I read. I just think that, you know, he he's a strong dude. He's got great hand strength. I remember that. And they talk about you know, another guy that was a leader and a starter, you know, somebody, all these guys, you notice the theme with not just the guys we drafted, but these undrafted guys, a lot of leaders, high IQs. Uh, we need young men. that are going to come in and change the culture of this locker room. So love the addition there. I love all of them, dude. I, I'm excited for what we're doing here. Uh, then one more offensive player on the offensive line added today, Harry Kreider. Um, you know, another guy that's going to play, he actually played tackle and guard. They say he can actually play a little bit of center too. So an intriguing, versatile pick. Every single guy we add is a versatile pick, I feel. So, I mean, that's always what you're looking for, especially in the NFL today. But, you know, as Philadelphia Eagles, I mean, my God, every guy you look at on this team, oh, he's versatile, he can play here. So uh, this guy, I remember he had a basketball and wrestling background they talked about. And, uh yeah, I mean, I don't know too much about him. I can go in depth on him, but um, obviously he's undrafted. But adding versatile guys to this 
team is what we need to do. Um, but I like the depth we have at offensive line now. Adding Dickerson really makes thing in, things intriguing. But yeah, that's all we've got so far. Those seven names, six on offense, one on defense. So uh, we added six on defense in the draft and we added three offensive players. Um, so, hey, loading up, getting this team ready. Um, you know, as you can see again, here's how it varied uh, from the actual draft. But I loved this draft, man. And I love the pieces we're adding uh, in the undrafted class because this is going to take a couple of years to rebuild this team. So getting that first round pick next year to move back six spots and then you traded a third round pick to move up. Everybody asked, why would you move back in the top 10? I said, well, if you only give up a third, maybe you have to give up Ertz, I thought, maybe a fifth. Well, we didn't even move into the seven, eight, or nine. It was the Cowboys at 10. Like, what? So we trade to the top 10. All we had to give up was a third round pick, but you still had gotten that first round pick and moved up from the fifth to the fourth round, 33 spots when you originally traded back six with the Dolphins. So you still have that first rounder. You use that pick. Um, you know, so. I, I, I'm really excited about it, I would say. Yes, 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 I am. So uh, you got McPherson, I believe, with that Dolphins pick. So got a corner that I'm excited about at the slot, but still, again, need to add to the outside. That's the only glaring need, but you stuck to your board, I believe, and they went with their best player available uh, from what it looked like, and I'm excited. I know people were upset about the Tom Donahoe thing, but look at Jonathan Gannon's reaction. That's a defensive coordinator. And I know Donahoe has been around forever, but uh, people are going to have varying opinions. And I like some of the moves that were made. Sure. Some of them I question because I liked other players, but I'm not with those scouts. I don't get to see everything they do and do all those things. So I trust them more, man. And I'm trusting that this team is building for the future. So next year we're loaded. We could have three first round picks. My Lord. So building toward the future, guys. Greatness could be ahead of us in the next couple of years. So let's stay patient. Um, we're going to have a couple, you know, maybe years of bumpy roads. We've talked about that, but I'm looking forward to the excitement. I think this offense is going to be loaded. We talk about adding Gainwell. You know, I, I think he's going to be a contributor off the bat. And uh, obviously, Devontae Smith, that's going to make Rager better, Fulgham better, every other receiver, Watkins, Hightower, Ward. They're all going to have to compete with Grimes. Uh, you know, these guys are all going to have to try to win a spot on this team, but I think this offense is going to be explosive. I hope everybody stays healthy and I can't wait to see what it looks like, but that was the undrafted class thus far. Um, tomorrow, probably going to get into a little bit of uh, some other moves made uh, in the draft by, you know, our opponents, the NFC East that is. So we'll be breaking stuff down. Anything crazy happens. I'll let you know, but that's pretty much all. If you guys have any questions, comments, let me know. If you're watching this later, you know you can always comment. I will try to get back to you. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to get rolling out here. Thank you guys for liking, subscribing, retweeting, whatever the heck you're doing out there to support me. I truly appreciate it. You can find me on all of these places, all those platforms. Uh, I appreciate you guys checking it out. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I will be back tomorrow. Um, if you need anything, please reach out, whether it be about football, life, doesn't matter. Uh, but what a great time. I want to thank you all that tuned in throughout this whole, these past few months with the draft. Um, you know, I, I'm still going to do this every single day, but I'm glad to catch a break from all the studying and preparing. Uh, but now it's time to get ready for this season, and I'm pretty damn excited. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hope you're all having a great night. Hope you had a great weekend. We'll start the week off right tomorrow. All right, guys, as always. Go birds!